I want you to go with me in your Bibles. First of all, I want to say thank you to the Lord for this opportunity to stand before you. I never take it for granted. Whenever many of you became members and you were around this altar, I told you I would pray for you. I would try to hear God for you and I would feed you. And I told you at the beginning of this year that this was our year of great growth. Uh, let me tell you something about growth. We can feed you. We can worship around this sanctuary together. We can invite the presence of God in. And he has come into this room in the last, what is this, seven? It's about to be July. So he's come into this room in the last seven months in a great way. I can, we can do all of that. We can worship till he walks among us. We can take the word and lay it out before, before you. But it, growth does not depend just on me. It doesn't depend on this stage. Oh, thank you for whoever said right, because I said growth doesn't just depend on this stage. You have to take what you have heard. You have to go home. You have to relook at in the book. Look at somebody say, take a new look in the book. Take a new look in the old book. Go home, read it, study it. Apply what you've heard. And I'm telling you, if you'll do that before this year is out, you will be able to measure growth in your life. Because God said, I didn't say it, God said this was our year of great growth. I said it's our year of great growth. It may, not, it may look like a year of great deficit for you, but I want you to hold on to the fact that it's going to be a year of great growth. It ain't over yet. I said it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. It's going to be our year of great growth. I want you to take your Bible to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29, I want to just read from a couple of verses. If you're watching online, we're grateful that you've joined us today. Get your Bibles out and let's read together out of the Word of God. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 16. And the Bible says, surely you have things turned around. Shall the potter be esteemed as the clay? For shall the thing made of him who made it? For shall the thing made say of him who made it? He did not make me. Or shall the thing formed say of him who formed it? He has no understanding. Is it not yet a very little while? Look at somebody and say it's just a little while longer. Is it not yet a very little while till Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field will be esteemed as a forest? Let me read that, that again. Is it not yet a little while till Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field be esteemed as a forest? In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of the darkness. I don't have a title yet. We'll know it by the time we get to the end of this message. Father, bless this word today. Just talk in here, talk big, talk loud. Just talk, God talk to us. Speak to our hearts. Let the witness of the wind blow in this room. Lord, let people hear and let them identify and let them be able to, to understand that you are a speaking God today and that you talk to us through everything that we go through in life. Have your way in here today and we'll give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. Before you sit down, look at somebody and say, neighbor, neighbor. I've been spinning, but he's been shaping me in the spin. Okay, there's your title. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I've been spinning, but he's shaping me in the spin. Last week we talked about the expense of moving when you are emotionally empty. Does anybody remember that from last week? Did you take any notes and, and, and look at them again? How many of you did that? Don't, lay, don't raise your hand in the house of God if you didn't. Thank you for all 15 of you. Um, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay. So uh, I talked about running emotionally empty and how that 
uh, there are, I gave you at least 10 warning signs that let you know that your emotional tank is running low. If you haven't heard that message, you should pick it up. And because what happens when your emotional tank begins to run low, you, then you, you slip over into a state that is called burnout. If you've ever been in a state that is called burnout, you know that that is a place that is not a great place to be. I recognize the warning signs that I gave you because I have experienced many of them over the years. I've experienced many of them myself. Uh, I, when the Lord touched me and he, he called me to preach and he called me to speak, he, he built a fire up under, my, under the feet of my life. I'm glad he did it then like he did it because I was much younger at the time and and I could run in a, at a pace. You know, he's amazing. He does all things well. I had all of all of my children were I had them bef before I was 20, and so I had the opportunity to to raise them into a a place where they could you know you know get a little bit up and older. I have a problem with especially with women who will leave their children and feel like God has called you to the nations. I have a real problem with that. Uh, God is going to call you to your home before he calls you to the nations. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and so God had blessed me to have my kids uh, young, and he knew what he was doing. And, and he then just, when, when I was about 30, 32, he called me to preach. By 38, he uh, ordained me to be a pastor. And somewhere between that and the time that I came here, the age of 50, uh, he, he ran me all over this world. And I preached from about every little church you could imagine, every conference, every, I, was, I just went everywhere. I was exhausted. But I remember, see, there is a blessing that you don't have room enough to contain. And the Lord, it's, it was as if my opportunities were pregnant with opportunities. And sometimes I would just want to want to walk away from it all because I was exhausted. My emotional tank was empty. The people, the church was shouting and the people were touched. And I'd go back to my hotel room. My husband would call me and he'd say, how was it? And I'd say, the people were blessed. And that is just pretty much how I felt because I, there is a point that you can get to where you're just so exhausted, you can't even enjoy what you're supposed to enjoy. And so I, in that state, uh, somewhere along the way, in between the age of 32 and 50, uh, actually my girls were probably in their um, 9, 10, 11, 12, somewhere around that area. Uh, the enemy started talking to me, and, and because when, when you're when you're exhausted, you're vulnerable, and and you you kind of give access to things that you would not normally give access to, and so he talked to my mind. And I remember one Christmas we were in Cincinnati. We were staying with uh, visiting my sister for the holidays, and and this wasn't where it began. It had beg began before then, but it kind of culminated right there because the devil said to me, you're not going to live to see your children grow up. You won't live to see them graduate. You won't live to see them build careers or build relationships or fall in love. You won't get to be there when they are married and you will never see a grandchild and you'll never see them raise a family. He bombarded me during that season. He bullied me is what he actually did. I didn't know to call it that back then, but that's what it was. And he also threatened me because he said, if you open your mouth and you say anything about this, I will make sure that it gets worse. And so I started stuffing all of those feelings. And I remember writing the sizes to their clothes down and the sizes to their shoe down. And I remember uh, giving it to my husband because I knew that if something happened to me, he wouldn't know what size clothes they wore or what size shoe they wore. That's how real it was to me. And I gave them to him, and, and, and it, I gave that to him. And during that process, the devil would say, that y you don't deserve kids like this anyway. You were no good to them. And he said, you weren't educated. You, you're going to just ruin their lives. And they deserve better than what you are able to give them. He here is the bottom line. The bottom line is I wish that, that I could tell you where I was and when 
when it happened, when it, when, it, when it all began to turn around for me, I wish I could point back to a specific time and say that was the day that it was absolutely broken. But the truth is, I don't know when it all turned around. And I don't know when it all changed. But I do know that I watched my girls all grow. I watched them take a career. I watched them all be married. I watched them have nine grandbabies and bring them into my house. I've watched God meet their need through the touch of God many times that was on my life. And all of that was the, de was the devil trying to talk to me because, uh, 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 and I understand it now really, because if I was him, I would have fought me too. But he was trying to stop me. Your greatest, your greatest barrier always comes before your greatest blessing. You better know that. And I don't know when it turned and I don't know when it changed. All I know is I kept moving and I kept praying and I kept praising and I kept worshiping God and I kept loving God and I kept on being faithful to what he had called me to do. And somewhere, somehow, as I was in motion, somewhere, somehow, as I continued to move, and let me tell you, it was not without resistance. There was resistance, but I continued to resist back. And I just thought, may the best man win. And the devil pushed one way and I pushed another. Ooh, look at somebody and say, you got to push through it. You got to push through it. Somewhere in the middle of all of that, like Elijah, like I preached last week, somewhere, somehow, God, God touched me. I was touched by an angel. And because of that touch, I have never again been as low as I was that season. And I have never been uh, to the depths of depression like I was in that season. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. The scripture is true when it says there are enemies that you shall see no more. Put some high end back on, on my mic, if you will. Tell somebody, no more of that, no more of that, no more of that. See, God had a plan for my life, okay? In my lowest moment, God had already ordained a plan. He ordained this Sunday morning. He ordained that on this Sunday morning, I would have grandkids playing over there, grandkids singing over there, kids singing in here. I would have son-in-law standing on the stage to support. I, I would have you sitting in the audience, and I'd have the opportunity to speak to you when back then I felt like I didn't even have the ability to speak to myself. But look at God. He had a plan. I wasn't privy to. Why am I telling you that? Because he has a plan for you that you are not privy to. You don't necessarily know about it now. Hallelujah. But if you'll keep pushing, even when you come up against resistance, it is through much tribulation that we enter into the kingdom. Look at somebody, tell them, push on, push on, push on. Never, ever, ever underestimate the price of the pursuit of your purpose. If anybody tells you it is not going to cost you, they have lied to you. Jesus paid it all when it comes to salvation, but when it comes to your purpose, there will be a pursuit that you will have to get into that will cost you something. And if you by chance just think it's going to automatically happen, I'm telling you today it's not going to automatically happen. If you think you can't die without obtaining your purpose, that's a lie. You can die. You can take your unwritten books to the grave. You can take your unbuilt businesses to the grave. You can take your unwritten songs to the grave. You can take your ministry that never got started and bury it in the grave. When you die, it will all die with you if you are just waiting for it to happen. It will not just happen. The promises of God are not just automatic and they're not just going to come to pass in your life. You got to know the word. You got to believe the word and you got to stand on the word and it is through much tribulation that we enter into the kingdom. Look at somebody on both sides. Tell them the fight is real. Thank you. Thank you, half of you, for following directions. Now, turn to the person on the other side and say, the fight is real. I'm telling you, this fight is real, church. I said it's real. It, I, I said this fight is real. And there will, there will be, trust me, when I tell you, some of us know this, some of, some of us don't, though. So I'm going to say it again. There will be days that you feel like a winner. There'll be days like, sea devil, you are such a liar. 
But I'm going to tell you, there'll be other days that you'll feel like a loser. Y'all better help me today. Don't act like you ain't never felt like a loser. I got up out of the bed to preach today. I'm just going to let y'all know that. I got up to do it. Whether you say amen or not, I'm going to talk to the internet. Hey, guys, I love y'all. I'm so glad you tuned in today. I hope your spirit is open because there's a word that's about to ricochet out of this pulpit into your house, your life, your children, your ministry, your dreams, your desires. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. Woo. You better shake yourself and say, wake up. There'll be days you feel like a, little, a loser. There'll be days you feel like a winner. And there'll be those in-between days. Those in-between days when you're, you're like a buffering ball. You know how when your computer, it's just that little ball. It's beautiful. It's, it's very cute. It's got all the col colors in it. And, and you just watch it. And it just spins and spins and spins. And you're impatient. You want that thing to get off your screen and you want your computer to calm down and you want the windows to open that you need to open and and all it's a buffering ball spinning just spinning sometimes the spin that hits your life will feel like it was a a wind that is about to jet propel you forward leaps and bounds there'll be other times that you'll feel like the spinning has left you in seasons where you feel like everything is out of your control. Anybody beside me ever felt like everything was? I mean, everything. You know, when God does it, he does it big, okay? When he does it, he does it big. And so when he shakes your life, he shakes your life big. And so as I look back, I, and when he blesses your life, he blesses your life big. As I, as I look back over my, the years of my life, I was thinking about it yesterday. It, it seems as if most of those last 20 years of my life are a blur. They're just a blur. Looking back, I, 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 I totally get why the enemy wanted to stop me at my sister's house in, in, uh, around the Christmas holiday of that year. I, I, I get that because so much God has, God has done so much. And, and the reason I probably can't tell you where or when that God changed things for me is because through all of it, I was in the spin. I was, I was in New York today. I was in Philly the next day. I was in Florida the next day. I was preaching a women's conference that day, and I was preaching a man. Now tell me where I'm going as I walk up to the pulpit. Tina, what's the pastor's name? What is his name? What is his name? I just won one particular pastor. I can't tell you who he is now, but I was... I had just preached for him. I had just been at this church the week before, and I was in the Charlotte airport a week later. I was on that little escalator thing, and I was, I was walking, and, and uh, he came past me, and he's like, hey, Pastor Brady, and I'm like, hey, who are you? I'm not kidding you. I couldn't, I, I, I looked at either Tina or Rose or whoever that was. I said, who in the world was that? And they said, you just preached for him last week. Well, praise God. I preached for seven other people last week too. Y'all think I'm kidding or you might think that's awful, but that was real. I was just in the spin. I, and my spin didn't last for just five seconds. I was spinning. I feel like I've been spinning for the last 20 years, okay? I was, I've been in the spin. All I know is God kept opening one thing after another thing after another thing after another thing. Things that I'd prayed for, but I got so busy doing the things that I had prayed for that I couldn't even thank him for opening the, the door or answering the prayer because I was spinning and little by little, and spin by spin he moved the dial of my life forward I don't know when it happened I don't know what day it happened I don't know what year it happened all I know is he began to add blessings to my life blessings that I didn't even have time to enjoy I, 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 oh that's a blessing and I, and I had to keep moving because I was spinning and here come another and here come another and here come another blessing and I was I was blessed in the city and I was blessed in the field and I was blessed coming in and I was blessed going out and, and I was just as dizzy as I could be and so as I look back over the last 20 years of my life it's like a blur the distance between where I was then and where I am today 
It's just, it's just a blur to me. Back then, I was worrying about, I was thinking about my, you know, when I had that, that, that traumatic experience in my life, I was thinking I was worried about my kids not, not being able to watch them grow up. And now I done watch nine of these other ones grow up. See, y'all, that was a, hey, that was a good place to say thank you, Jesus. I'm now I'm watching, I, I was afraid I wouldn't go see them grow up, and now I'm watching their own kids grow up. But in the meantime, life has changed. I'm a little older now, I got some gray hair that tries to come out, and if I can't get to the beauty shop in time, you just have to see a streak in my head. That's just it. My hair falls out. If you, everybody walks around me, they're just pulling hair off me. Go ahead, just go ahead, just do it. It don't matter. I'm not offended. I'm used to it. I'm not as quick as I used to be. But you know what? I'm here. <laughs> Woo! And the devil told me I wouldn't be here, but I'm here. Oh, I'm going to own the moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to breathe in and I'm going to say thank you. Lord, I was spinning back then, but I thank you. Now that I'm not spinning so much, I thank you that my eyes have seen what you put in my spirit. I'm still here. Tell somebody I'm still here. Things are a little blurry as I look back, but that's par for the course. I said that's par for the course. Looking, looking and seeing things blurry is par for the course when you live in the spin zone. <laughs> Let me say it again. When you live in the spin zone, you can expect things to get blurry. Some of you are wondering right now, why are things so blurry? It's because you are living in the spin zone. And the spin zone doesn't give you the luxury of living or staying in the comfort zone. The spin zone pushes you out of the comfort zone. As a matter of fact, it will push you into an un comfortable zone that's what the spin will do and and it, it I mean it's not that good things don't happen because obviously they they did for me and they do but but there are uh, it, it's just that things are moving so fast that you don't always have a, have the time to appreciate things that that you should appreciate because y y y you know life just keeps coming at you it just keeps coming at you. And, 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 and just when you deal with that, you're like, I got to deal with this. And now I've got to deal with that. And, and, and I, was, I was so broke before, I couldn't afford anything. And now I'm so tired. I got some money, but I'm too tired to enjoy it. And so it's just complicated. Tell somebody, it's just complicated. You got to deal with this. And, and now I get that dealt with and whew, I'm thinking I've got that settled. Here comes something else. Now that that's over, here comes something else that we have to. Now we got the kids settled. Now we got problems in our home and our marriage. We got this to do. And we got, we got our house is falling apart and, and things, are, things are just going crazy. And, 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 and when bad things happen, you really, let me tell you something. When bad things happen, you can't afford to grieve over them too long because life won't let you. I said, like, anybody know what I'm talking about? I said, life will not let you grieve too long. In just a minute, go ahead and grieve, but in just a minute, you got to wipe your tears, you got to square your shoulders, and you got to recover quick. Tell somebody, you got to recover quick, recover quick, recover quick, because if you don't recover quick, you won't be ready for what's next. Something next is coming. The mortgage is coming again. It's due in another 30 days. The electric bill is due in another 30 days. The car payment is coming next month as sure as I'm trying. I got to get over today's troubles because I can't let compound interest. I can't take next, week, next week's troubles and merge them into this week's troubles. I got to get over that because I got to be strong enough to handle what is coming next. And so I, I got to keep moving and I got to cry. And, 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 and sometimes I just got to get in. I, I, I mean, I got to go to work no matter how bad I feel because I got to keep the money flowing in. I got a family to take care of. And so I got to go. So the only time I can really break down and cry is when I'm on my way to work or when I get into the bathroom by myself. That's when I go ahead and let myself cry because I can't, I can't cry when I'm on a job. I got to smile. I can't cry when I come to church because I got to make people think that I'm okay. God is good all the time and all the time God is Woo! I'm preaching today. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. You, see, that's how life is when you're in the spin zone. I said, that's how life is. Somebody ought to jump up real quick and turn around real fast and just sit on down. Life moves so quickly. I said, life is moving so quickly. Our world is absolutely chaotic. Do y'all understand? If you watch the nightly news, you'll see our world is absolutely chaotic. And it's, it, it's racing faster and faster and faster towards something. I don't even know. The only piece I have is I know what the Word of God says. But if I didn't know God, I'd be scared out of my mind. Because I'm going to tell you something. The world, it's as if somebody has put their foot down on the accelerator in life. And they got our world so spinning like a cyclone and all along the way pressure is building and, and, and the temperature is rising and people are losing their, their, their tempers and they're, they're losing their patience and people are more angry now than I have ever seen people in my life. They are quick to lay down on the horn the second that the, life cha the light changes. If y'all ever blow at me, if y'all ever behind me and I don't move fast enough and I see it you I am gonna chase you down okay I'm, gonna t I'm just telling you people have no patience and don't ever 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 be driving and get lost or be indecisive about was I supposed to turn right or was I I don't know let me see, let me see. don't ever do that because you could lose your life over that today when I tell you our world is crazy you could lose your life over the fact that you just your GPS went offline for a second and now you don't know which way you're gonna go and so you're halting between two decisions because today people go from zero to a hundred just like that. Just like, y'all can't say amen because you're guilty of it. I said people go from zero to a hundred just like that. I ain't talking about just any, just any group of people. I'm talking about all types of people. Black, white, yellow, whatever color you are. Male, female, whatever gender you are. It doesn't matter how many, the rich, the poor, the busted, disgusted, the educated, the uneducated, all, everybody together. It goes from a zero to a hundred. I'm talking about people. I'm talking about people who are brilliant when it comes to things that are complicated. When it comes to complicated things, they are absolutely brilliant, but they're brainless when it comes to simple things like being patient, being kind. Uh -huh. People today simplify the complicated and then they complicate the simplified. I mean, we could run Fortune 500 companies like this. We can keep things in order. We can keep things moving. But we go home and our house is a disaster. Our kids are rebellious. We, we, can, we can make those that work for us line up. But when we go home, we have no authority and we have no power. We got people today who, can, who are having medical, uh, who, can, who can find a medical diagnosis when nobody else can do it. We got people that have developed technology to where we can talk maybe. Uh, it, 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 there was a day that my, I was thinking about the other day. We used to send cassette tapes through the mail to my sister from Detroit in Arkansas because it was too much money to talk on the phone because you had to pay by the minute on your on your on your big phone. Anybody know what a with a cord on a yellow one? <laughs> A yellow curly phone. We, 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 would, we would do that and we, we knew that was too much money so we'd get a cassette tape and we'd send each other messages and talk and sing and do all that kind of stuff and then we would put it in an envelope, we'd record it, put it in an envelope, send it through the mail and that's how we communicated with each other for a little bit. We, 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 we did crazy stuff like that because you know we wanted to stay connected. We were family but that's the best that we could do. But I'm going to tell you they del they've done, they've done so much in technology today. I used to give my girl a beeper so I mean a pager you know what a pager was because I, I, I'd, I'd let them go to church by themselves and drive and get there and I, I, I remember saying all right you better call me before this pager rings on you because if it rings you better find the nearest cell phone I, I mean you better find the nearest phone booth and you better call y'all know what a phone booth is find a phone booth put your 10 cents in there 
And you better call your mama because that means if I don't hear from you, I'm getting ready to get in my car and I'm getting ready to come and find you. What's the route you're taking, by the way, so that if I lose touch with you, I can come that route and I can find you. Oh, you know what I love about God is he knows the way that I take. Hey, God. And when I get lost, he finds me. I said, when I, get, when I lose my way, he finds me. But so much is progressing. Technology is progressing so much. Now we can sit and have a conversation with not just five people or, or, or 50 people or 500 people, but we can do it and we can talk to people in other countries, other continents, and we can even look at each other with, with FaceTime or with Google Chat or whatever we do. We can do all of that. We were making cassettes, but back then we had, we, we, could, we did that, but now we can, because people, people, te technology is moving so quickly, but people can't be patient enough for you to change lanes when they come zooming up behind you and you see them in your rear view mirror and you put your signal on to get over and get out of their way, they get over too and they try to pack. Do you not see my signal? I'm trying to get out of your way. They can find so many just incredible breakthroughs, medical breakthroughs, technology breakthroughs. They find financial breakthroughs. They, they're able to deal with complicated things, but then they turn around and don't know how to go to sleep at night. Time is spinning. The clock is twirling. Listen, we're getting ready to celebrate 4th of July. How in the world did that happen? I feel like we were just in here talking about New Year's Eve. Let the balloons fall. Let them fall two minutes early. Let them fall so that the people will know that when they least expect it, God is getting ready to open the windows of heaven and pour something down. I'm telling you, how did we get here? How could we be in July? It seemed like we just celebrated Easter Sunday. Palm Sunday. Then Easter, Easter was just two weeks ago, right? I don't know. But how in the world is this happening? Look at somebody, tell them we're living in the spin zone, that's why. We are like clay on the wheel. And the gravity of life is pulling us and spinning us into circles. So we often feel like the spin has taken over our life. But here's what I want you to know today. Is you're being made in the spin. I don't know who I'm talking to, but... Somebody who feels like that little ball on my computer, who's going in circles, who feels like I don't know my head from the hole in the ground. I start, I did this all week this week. I started 20 jobs. And in the middle of doing this job, I thought, oh, but I need to go over here and do that. So I left that job undone. I come over here. I started that up, oh, but then I got to go over here and do something like that. And I have got 20 jobs undone and I've never really finished anything. Why? Because I'm in the spin zone. Ooh, maybe I'm by myself in the spin zone. But here's the deal, you're being made, this is what I want to tell you, you're being made in the spin. You're growing in the spin. But because you are going so fast in the spin, you can't recognize that you are growing. So you don't think you're growing. But the truth of the matter is you're growing even in the spin. God is growing you. Trust me when I tell you, you are growing while you're spinning. Look at somebody and tell them you're growing while you're spinning. You're growing. Just turn around and tell somebody in the back, you're growing while you're spinning. You're growing. You don't always recognize the growth because of the pace of the spin. But I'm here today to tell you, rest assured, that whenever the spin and the touch of the master's hand come together, growth is guaranteed. Now, shake somebody's hand and tell them I'm spinning, but I'm growing. I'm spinning because it's the combination of the two. It's the combination of the two that make me who I am. The touch without the spin. Spinning would just leave a big hole in the vessel. But the spin with the touch, when it is combined to, it, it, listen, let me tell you this. If, 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 if by some chance you, you it's, it's the, t if, if you were just touch, but you weren't spin, then it would be just a big hole. You would end up as a clump of clay. You would end up just as a pile of clay somewhere. And, and, and if you have the spin, but you don't have the, the touch, then you got commotion without formation. See, we don't want commotion without formation.
expectation. So we need to expect the touch and the spin. I said the touch and the spin. I don't want to spin without his touch. I don't want to spin without, I want to know that he's got me while I'm spinning. Uh, look at somebody and tell them, pray for both, pray for both, pray for both. Because the clay without both the spin and the touch is useless potential. It is wasted potential. You need to spin and you need to touch. So when Isaiah is talking to us about the clay and the potter, he is telling us you're going to be shaped in the spin. He's helping us to know that when God gets ready to make us, he puts us in a spinning environment. Anybody been in a spinning environment? Whew. That means God's getting ready to make you. There's something going on. Something is about to happen. Something is about to change in your life because you are in a spinning environment. When he ever gets ready to do something in your life, he always starts that, that spinning. I asked my grandson last week, I said, why do you love Beyblades so much? And he started telling me, and I, I, I started looking at him, and I'm thinking, that ain't nothing but a top. When I was a kid, we used to... <laughs> We pushed that little handle down and the top would just spin all over the place. See, that's just, that's just, uh, that's just a, a top. That's what that is. Except our tops were bigger and, and those little bla bay blades are little. But it's just the same thing. It's the same motion. Things are, things are just spinning out. Of, look at somebody and tell them God spins things when he gets ready to grow you up. He starts spinning over here. See, God, it, it's almost like when God offers you something, he offers it at the worst time in the world. Has anybody ever noticed that? I mean, there's, it's, the rest of y'all are so spiritual, you don't ever notice that. Okay, but, maybe, but, but, but it's, like, it's like God. See, I like to do things, and I like to progress. I like things to be calm, and then I'm going to take a step forward. Don't ask me to take a risk when things are chaotic. That's not in my nature to do that, all right? But I want things calm. I want things steady. I want things solid, and then I feel like I can take a risk. But God is completely opposite of that, okay? He says, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not like you, and I'm going I'm to pick sometimes things. I'm almost pick seasons that feel like the worst time in your life and you're going to be sitting there wondering what in the world God I can't go another day and he says I'm going to say go now 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 is the time now I'm going to open the door for you see God moves when God moves I said God moves when God moves he said, Abraham and Sarah, I'm not going to wait. I, I, I'm, he said, no, I'm not going to give you a baby right now. I'm going to wait till you are unable to help me. I'm going to wait till you're old. I ain't going to do it while you're young, while you're strong, and while you're the most likely to succeed. I'm going to do it when you're old and weak and when you're most likely to fail. I'm going to do it when your body is as good as dead Abraham and Sarah, when your, your womb is past childbearing age. That's when I'm going to do it for you. When you're in the spirit zone, when you're outside of the comfort zone, in the middle of all hell breaking loose, that's when I'm going to open my mouth and, be, and declare that you shall live and not die. When you cannot help me have this baby, that's when I'm going to put a baby in your womb. I'm going to do it when your marriage is in the biggest mess it has ever been in. Hello, I'm going to do it for you when your faith, not when your faith is at an all time high, but when your faith is at an all time low. God said that is when I'm going to start spinning in your life and I'm going to spin when you can't see your way clear. See, God will tell you to do the craziest things. He'll tell you to stand when everything around you is falling down. He'll tell you, having done all to stand, just stand there. He'll say live when everything around you looks like it's dying. He'll tell you to give when it looks like, Lord, I need to receive right now. I can't be given. I got to receive. He'll give you faith to build a nest, to get all comfortable in your nest, and then he'll come in and push you out of your nest because your faith, church, is not proven in the comfort zone. Your faith is proven in the spin. The spin. So, the reason we like the comfort zone is because in the comfort zone we are usually in control. I don't like, I'm honest. I, you're not getting me on them being Ferris wheels. And you will not see me at Six Flags. Number one, it's too hot. They need to open Six Flags in the winter and shut it in the summer. 
if they won't see me. But since I'm not the only one that matters, they'll probably keep doing what they're doing. It ain't, it's working for them. But I don't like, I, oh, I won't get on them things. You know why? Because I don't have control. I like to never got to the point where I could fly. Because when I fly, I can't, and not only do I not have control, I can't see the person that has control. So I have to know that the person that is really in control is sitting right in my seat with me. Oh, God, help us, Jesus. I don't like it. See, the spin, look at somebody and tell them the spin is out of your control. See, La, that means think about that for a minute. Think about right now of everything in your life that's spinning that you are trying to control. It's out of your control. Let me tell you something. You can't choose when you're going to be tested. You can't choose where you're going to be tested. You cannot choose how long that the test is going to last. Look at somebody. Tell them the spin is out of your control. Oh, that's a good title. That's a good title. Let's call it that. The spin is out of, it's out of your control. You don't get to choose who's going to get sick in your family. You don't get to choose who's going to live and who's going to die. Who's going to come and who's going to go. You don't get to choose the losses that take place in your life. You don't get to choose who, you, who breaks your heart. You, you don't even, sometimes you don't even get to choose who you fall in love with. Hello, how many of you ever, ever fell in love with a fool? Don't raise your hand. Don't do it. The people will judge you. Don't, I know church people, don't raise your hand. You ever fell in love with a fool? Everything in you was saying, don't do it, girl, don't, don't. Man, do not call her back. Do not, next thing you know, hi. What you doing? Nothing, what you doing? Just nothing, talking to you. Next thing you know, your heart's engaged, your emotions is all engaged. Six months later, your heart is broken. You don't get to choose who's going to lie on you. Who's going to ruin your reputation. You don't get to choose who's going to walk out and leave you in the middle of the night. You know why? Because the spin is out of your control. Like the Beyblade, it's just going wherever it goes. But the good thing about it is that there's a God who sits high and who looks low. Woo! And he's in control. You ain't in control of the spin, but he's in control of the spin. Now, when we talk about the potter's house in the, in the scripture, we usually go not to Isaiah. We usually go to Jeremiah. But Isaiah has something to say about the matter as well. Jeremiah's perspective comes from the potter. Whenever you, whenever you read what Jeremiah wrote about the potter and the potter's house, his perspective comes from what the potter says and how the potter thinks. And, and he tells us that the clay, when Jeremiah is talking about it, he tells us that the clay is marred in his hands. And, and he tells us what the potter thinks about that. He tells us as the potter is, is holding the clay, he tells us that the potter is, is holding the clay, but he's making a decision while he's holding the clay. And even though that he knows the vessel is marred, and even though that he knows that the vessel is broken, he has made a decision not to throw it away. He has made a decision not, not to just toss it to the side, not to trash it and go after another piece of clay. But he, Jeremiah tells us the thinking process of the potter when he is handling the clay. He, 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 he tells us those things. He, he tells us that he's made a decision that he's going to work with it, that he's going to, that he's going to put his hands back on, that he's going to break it down and he's going to make it over again. And in Jeremiah 18 and four, the Bible says, and he made it again, another vessel. And he say that with me. And he made it again, another vessel. Say it again. He made it again, 
another vessel. So he made it another. Well, that's confusing to me because that's really an oxymoron statement. It's, it's kind of a crazy statement because is it it or is it another that he made? Did he make it or did he make it into another? That, that can be God will do things like that that will confuse us from time to time. So if it's another, then it's not it. Of course, if it's another, it's not it. And if it's it, then of course it's not another, right? Are you following me? I know you're following me. We're smart like that. But wait just a minute. If it's it, then it can't be another. But but see, that, that would be the truth if it was in your hand or if it was in my hand. But it's not in your hand and it's not in my hand. The clay is in the hand of the potter and the potter can take it and he can make it into another. So it's it, so he has the ability to take something and, and work with it until it appears to be something new. So it's it, it's me, but it's really not me. Let me tell you something. You see me, but you don't know the real me. The real me was raggedy. The real me was sinful. The real me was spiteful. But I ended up at the potter's house, and I ended up on the wheel of the potter, and I was touched by his hand. And so now I am the same, but I'm really not the same. Y'all ain't following me today. I'm the same, but I'm not the same because he made me another vessel. You wouldn't have the ability to do that, but he has the ability to take something, break it down, and start all over again. And he did it in the spin. He did it in the spin. I don't know exactly when he, when he did it. All I know is I was made new. All I know is how I was changed. Tremaine Hawkins came along and sang a wonderful change has come over me while I was spinning. All I know is that while I was spinning, I was looking around and it, it was me, but it really wasn't me anymore. I'm not the same person that I used to be. Uh, I was, I'm different. I was changed in the spin. If he's ever changed your life in the spin, somebody ought to help me right now. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, somebody ought to praise him right now because when you were broken in his hand, he didn't just throw you away. Oh God, I said when you were broken in his hand, he didn't pitch you over the shoulder, over his shoulder and say, no, never mind, I'm gonna get somebody else. No, when he saw you in your brokenness, he could have decided you were not worth it. He could have decided that I was not worth it. He could have killed me, but instead he decided he would clean me up and make me over again. I was cracked. I said I was cracked, but he kept me in his hand. I was wounded, but he kept me in in his hand. I was flawed, but he kept me in his hand. I was damaged, but he kept me in his hand. I was marred, but he kept me in his hand. He held me when I was broken. He held my broken life. He held my broken heart. He held my broken dreams. He held my broken reputation. He held my broken marriage. And he held my broken mind. And he loved me in spite of my brokenness. Anybody can love you when you're whole. Anybody can love you when you got it going on. Anybody can love you when you're complete. Anybody can love you when there's no damage and there's no flaws. But he loved me when I was broken. He loved me when I didn't believe him. He loved me when I accused him. He loved me when my life was in pieces. He loved me when I was fragmented. See, some people come to church and they praise God and they get high off of the fact that they are whole. But some of us come to praise him because, not of our wholeness, but because of our brokenness. Because we know what could have happened. I said, we know what could have happened. So to God be the glory for having mercy on a cracked pot. Look at somebody and tell him you were a cracked pot. Yeah, you were a pot that was cracked, but he loved you anyway. Now look at somebody and tell him, you were a cracked pot, but he loved you anyway. I was a cracked pot, but he loved me. I, I, I said I was cracked. I had pieces here, pieces there, but he loved me anyway. And he made it again into another vessel as was pleasing to the pot. Don't be rolling your eyes at me. Your vote don't count. 
He made me like I am because it was pleasing to him. Therefore, stop trying to make me measure up and stop trying to make me different and stop trying to make me somebody I am not. He made me the way he wanted me and you weren't even there. He never consulted you. He did it like he wanted me. You don't get to do that in my I am who I am by the grace. He made me who I am because it seemed good to him. Don't be getting with people who keep trying to change you. They'll destroy your self-worth. Yep, I just closed the book. That means there's another half a message left in there. But you'll have to come back next week if you want to hear it. <laughs> if you really want to hear the conclusion of the matter, just come on, come on back. Because I've really given you enough just now. The very fact that he could have discarded you. The very fact that he could have threw you in the trash. But instead, when you were broken, he held you very carefully in his hand. I don't know who, come on, y'all, help me here. We can't wait all day. I'm just, I'm on it today. I don't know what's going on, Jesus. Because I love the Lord. I said, I love the Lord. How in the world do I have to make you praise him when you know he held you when you were cracked? You ain't got to make me say nothing. I'll praise him in my car. I'll praise him in my kitchen. I'll praise him in my house. I'll praise him even if they shut my mouth because I'll praise him in the council of my own mind. Because I was cracked. See, people will discard you in a minute today. But he loved me in my cracked places. And he healed the cracked places. Laid his touch on me, put his hand on me. And I preach what I preach today because somebody's life, you feel like it's spinning. Everybody stand, everybody stand, everybody stand. Don't walk toward the door and need you to be still for five minutes, maybe ten. Somebody in this room says, I feel like uh, my life is spinning past a breeze. I ain't, I'm coming after, after saints today. If you say, Pastor Brady, my life has been spinning and all, to be quite honest, I'm pretty dizzy. <laughs> Whenever you're dizzy, you got to find a place to lay your head down. Because you can't keep your head up and be spinning all the time. So you got to find something to lean on. Wait a minute, let me lean on you. Let me lean on Jesus. I feel like things are crazy in my house, in my marriage, my family, my extended family. I feel like a loser and I know I'm a winner, so that by itself has me spinning. I don't know when things are going to change. I don't know when the breakthrough is going to come, but I'm just spinning and I need a place to lay my head. Who am I preaching to today? If that's you, slip up your hand. Slip it up high and spin it, Pastor Brady. Spin it. Listen, I'd put up both feet if I could. But I came today to tell you, don't think that the spin is a waste of time. Because when one of those Beyblades get through spinning, it might have started over here. But by the time it gets finished, it's done mowed down everything that's in its way. And it's no longer over there, but it's standing right here. Oh, look at somebody. Tell him you're moving, you're moving, you're moving, you're moving. You're, just keep on moving. Just yield to the spin. Every now and then when you can't take it no more, lay your head down on the potter. Lean on Jesus because you are in his hand. Who am I talking to today? I 
wanted to just encourage you with that word. So if you go out of here and your life is still spinning this week like it was last week, every time you feel like, Lord, I'm buffering and I can't find a landing spot, just know you got to lay your head down on Jesus because he will change your life. How many of you know he's a life changer? A wonderful change. Help me. Has come. Somebody say a wonderful change. Yeah. I dare you to slip up your hands while you're singing and help me. Help me thank you for the change. Say it again. Lord, I thank you for the change. Close. You need to know the potter so that you can lay your head on it.